Welcome to the Windy Hill Windsock with me, The Solution, and joining me today is Fiona. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good, thank you. This is uh, FF, as it's known for short, Fiona's forecast, Numero Quatro. Um, Numero Quatro. Numero Quatro, that's right. I think Spanish is Quatro. No, French is Quatro. Do a clay Quatro. Yeah, I'm getting my romantic languages languages mixed up. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so we lost last week. So So we fail in our – we're failing miserably in our – forecast we may have to give this the boot eventually if we can't get one bloody right (laughs) well we're still ahead and of course if we win tomorrow we're on the same level as the flag pies collingwood oh yes of course yeah because they've lost one now haven't they yeah we'll both be three and one which would be nice given they're meant to be flag favorites yeah april Um, premier april premier they come down with a thud I mean, look, let's be honest, I, I didn't enjoy Brisbane winning, um, but on the other side you of that... You just played well, by the way. Which is the part of the pain. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Collingwood look, losing is obviously the bonus. Yeah, yeah. To be fair to um, Judas, uh, he, w- he was rucking against nobody. That's right. But he is better in the ruck, I've said many times, like... <laughs> But, like, I just saw it. I just saw someone in the media say it. I'm convinced that it is better when he plays ruck. ruck. Uh, hello, duh. Of course he is because he's a beautiful uh, field kick. Mm-hmm. He's a sublime field kick and it gets him in the game when he's got to be in the centre and up and about and he loves that and he's got the potential to, to kick uh, long bombs, 60 out from the centre. Like, you know, it, yeah, it was just I felt like it was such a duh. Statement. Yeah, he, it's just his challenges, his fitness. That's why he's never an effort. Been, yeah, an effort. So, so yeah, he, a good ruckman will hurt him the other way. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Enough about Judas. Uh, so, we've got our usual segments. We've got ch- 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 changes. Yep. We've got the sitting Joe and the smoking Joe and taking then the, the wild card. Storm, and then the wild card. I've got a, yep. I've got a decent wild card too for oh, you. Beautiful. So. Going to the ch- tell me the changes. changes. So I think it was a pretty. Uh, it was a sweet. It was a sweet swap, wasn't it? Well, yeah. So in goes Zerk. Phew. Brandon Zerk Thatcher, which is a relief. So I think doesn't that automatically to... make you feel ten times better about the game? It does, which goes to show. <laughs> Goes to show how poor our backline's been, A, and B, how uh, how good his progression has been as well. Which one do you think it says more about? <laughs> uh, I don't know how the Verds still get oh, I'm a bit worried. A bit worried about how he's going, and I was thinking about him a bit actually. Is it this the Brad Scott fingerprints on the team that seen him? Uh, kind of not be himself because as as I called it from I called it from the preseason. I said in the preseason games he did mm. not he looked very rusty. He did not look like himself. Then in the first few rounds he was ter- in the f- couple of the games he was terrible. I didn't think he was uh, super bad against the Suns, but um against St Kilda he, he had a poor game again. Um I don't know if it's the Brad Scottness or if he's carrying something, but he has not been great one-on-one, which is his strength, or maybe he's been asked to do something different. I, I can't quite figure him out. Well, what would be the problem with Brad Scott? Why wouldn't – why would LeBird go backwards? <sighs> maybe just he's been asked to do something different by the yeah, coach. Okay. I, I don't know. I can't see why he would be, um, given that Ridley is being allowed to be that intercept defender again. I don't know if that has impacted Laverde's role. Because the other, the other, the other option hmm. is that he's not fit. Well, Massimo D'Ambrosio is out. But I think there's a couple of lucky people. I think LeBird's lucky. Dyson's <laughs> lucky. And Harrison Jones is lucky. Yeah. I mean, so, the, one, the one thing you could say for LeBird is that we don't have a backup for him. I mean, you could potentially mm. bring Baldwin, but again, he's bring, he gives size... We, we've got to make way with a bit of height um, if we do a Laverde-Baldwin swap. 
Um, so I think Laverde stays in purely because we have no other ba- no depth in that position. Mm. Jones uh, baffles me and uh, it ba- conti- will continue to baffle me. Heppel, as I've said to you in the past, I think it's his leadership. You don't agree, though, that just for the leadership he should stay in, right? No, if it was just based mm. on leadership, um, Barack Obama was in town. He was a good leader. Just get him get him in the halfback flank. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. You, you know, but I should, I should just uh, round it off. The mm. subs will be from... Hind, who was dropped also. Mm-hmm. I don't know he particularly did himself a whole lot of favours against the Saints, but then again, he had a lot of mates. Um, Will Snelling and Andrew Phillips and D'Ambrosio are the four. Uh, Phillips is a strange one too. I, I thought Phillips would play. I thought we missed him last week. But... Um, can I ask you a question? Like, if Philip, mm. if if we're lacking the tool, so let's let's essentially say that Phillips was filling the gap left by Two Meter Peter, because if Two Meter Peter is playing, is Phillips playing? No. Okay. So, what is the harm instead of bringing Phillips in, bringing Voss in then? Yeah. Well, that's that's a good question. Um, can Voss ruck? No, no, I wouldn't suggest. That's that's so, probably your only. Yeah, you then you're relying heavily on Wiedemann to yeah. do a lot, a lot of rucking because we've got the four. We have four rotating forwards, and that's probably yeah. not a great option. Yeah. I don't think Wiedemann showed that he's a viable option last week. Again, last week wasn't a good game for a lot of people, so maybe maybe we shouldn't be judging. But yeah, I mm. I don't know. Maybe Brad Scott's just trying to. Yeah, his balance right and his first team right. I, th- I thought we were better with Phillips in. I think he provides a contest up forward. His disposal is actually okay for a big guy. And, I mean, uh, if, it, if, it's, if it's lack of tools, if, it, if two metre Pete has put such a wrench, and it has, I mean, I saw someone do a poll pre season who's the least likeliest player that we can afford to miss, that we can afford to lose. And mm. some other people were saying, like, Merritt. Um, Ridley and and there was a two meter Peter there, and I can't believe like more people didn't take two meter Peter. It is one hundred percent two meter Peter, the player we would most not want to lose. Yeah, and yeah, this yeah. is showing. Um, but in the absence of two meter Peter, you need to we need to like bring in some help for the forward line because otherwise we're just going to get their defenders. That's right. Doing what Jack Hilda did last week, Harry which is Jones. taking marks. You're expecting Harry Jones or Wiedemann to take the best defenders. Yeah. With Phillips and or Draper down there, they take one of the best and then one of the other forwards can get off the leash a bit. I also, Mm. look, I also, I don't think this is a reason to bring in another ruck, but I also think Draper's energy down in the forward line and his presence kind of rattles defenders, I've got to admit. No, no. Yeah. Don't you agree? I mean, Don't you uh, agree? Yeah, I, I mean, you're right. And I guess what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with, you know, redundancy plans here, yeah. which we're needing to put in place because two metres out. Um, do yeah, you think we'll, Scott is is persisting with Harry Jones because he, he thinks con- just I'm just getting continuity in him and so one day, like high potential tomorrow, it clicks and he kicks four? Like, there's a chance that could happen. Do you think that's the reason he's persisting with him? Well, look, I've often said on this podcast that when it comes to tactics, there's no one in podcast land, I don't care who you are, there's no one who who's in podcast land who are fan podcasts, not people who, you know, are part of the footy industry. Nobody get, gets the tactics like no. AFL coaches. Mm. And, you know, we... we, we we probably know some people. You go pretty deep. I don't go that deep. Um, I probably un- understand ten percent of what's happening out there. And if I sat in a coach's box, I wouldn't know what the fuck is going on. But I guess you take Brad Scott's um, word on face value from the previous week, where he said that he thought Harry played well and, and did a role. I mean, I didn't see it, but whether he's protecting the player 
in the media or he's been genuine in that regard, I don't know. But then taking him off last week was a clear indication it wasn't working. So I don't know, maybe it's his last chance um, on the basis that, you know, the, the previous week he was okay. Maybe it's a balanced thing. Maybe at least Harry Jones can have a ground um, and lead up. And, you know, where, he, where where did he get possessions last week? It was mainly up on the half-forward wing, kind of almost that... Um, but I don't know that we we should be sacrificing a forward to, to, to do that. Like, we don't... We're not blessed in the high forward, tall forward stakes to be doing that. Like, to me, that's not helping the team. But isn't isn't that part of what the lead... Your lead up forwards create space for the next wave. Yes. In theory. So, you know, maybe Harry's doing that. It's probably an indication that Langford's going to stay down back as well, which I don't agree with. (laughs) Yeah, I mean... Uh, I, I, my only my only reading into it is that Brad Scott is just giving him continuity and one day, one day, possibly, hopefully soon, it's going to click and he'll mm. kick. And don't get me wrong, listeners, don't come at me. Oh, it's not about him kicking four. It's not, I've said this many times, it's not about him taking 16 beautiful marks. It's just about his contest work. It's not about crashing packs, somebody, you know, sarcastically let's, said that to me. It, it, yes, we want to see a bit of all that, hmm. but that's not what I need to see to give him a pass mark. Is but also, let's be, fa- let's be fair to him. How many mates did he have last week? There were so many players down. There were so many players not contesting, in my opinion. There were so many players not running. Um, there were so many players who were poor performers. So let's... Not make it, <laughs> Harry Jones. Oh, absolutely. Okay. He's, he was not. Yeah. Uh, Wiedemann didn't have a great game either. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. I thought he was okay in the first half. He was aggressive in the first half, and then lost it in the second when we needed it and when we mounted a comeback. Um, he had many, many mates. This is not a, a, a kind of a um, an isolated problem to Harry. Mm. It's just this is a pattern in Harry's game that I've seen. That's it's more, isn't more the question: What the fuck does Voss need to do? Who does he need to have sex with and, to get in the team? And like, Scott is cryptic in his in his interview. And that is is this not the most bullshit response you can hear? Oh, there's just a few things left we want him to do. Oh, so kicking like, you know, 11 goals in, in three weeks. Sorry, I don't know the exact number. Mm. Is, that, is that not enough? He's agile. He turns on the mark. His, his pressure is pretty good. Defensively, he could probably do a, a few things better, but I don't see Wiedemann's pressure being any worse than Voss's currently in the VFL. Granted, he's only in the VFL. Sure, there's a lot of ifs and buts, but to me, could we be doing any worse? That's my yeah. argument. Yeah, because and, and it's, it's almost like for him it, and for certain players, not just him, to get in the team, it's like this precious... Yeah. thing that he needs to be this perfect polished diamond to get in yeah. the team. We've got so many shit trucks playing <laughs> and getting games willy-nilly. Like, I don't, I don't really see the harm in giving him a go. And I think his upside says to you, because, you know, some players raise their level when they're with better players and yeah. playing against better players. Let's I see feel, if he can do it. Yeah, and I, I just, yeah, I just feel like, what it, he could not do any worse than we've got, but I, I sense that Brad Scott just wants to give jo- and but you know here's my thing Voss will be will actually do what you're saying and be great when he comes in because he's been made to be in the VFL and earn it. Ask me how many VFL games do you want take a guess how many VFL games Jones has played? <laughs> you could say Jones, um, take a guess, but take three. a guess, yes, in, he's been, in his yes. In his career at Essendon, he's played three VFL games. That is not was, even enough for anybody to find their feet or to be made. Darcy Parrish has played more VFL games than Harry Jones in his career. Like, this is what I'm saying. Voss will come in and actually he will appreciate his moment and his spot because he's been made to earn it. Langford, it, it's not a coincidence that when Worsfold made Langford, like, you know, rot in the VFL for weeks on end and then he came in and, and actually played his best footy because he, he had to fight for it. Jones has never been made oh, to do that. I was trying to move on from Harry Jones. No, no, I, this is not a Jones thing. It's more like this is more about Voss. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I certainly take your point. And it's a long um, season, so he'll get his chance eventually, of course. So finally, who do you think will be the sub? Snelling, Hind, Phillips or Massimo? 
I reckon they'll make Massimo the sub. He did a lot of good and a lot of bad last week, like a lot of his mates. So he's yeah, yeah he's he's just his defensive work. That's all I'll say. His defensive running could be a bit better, but that's again yeah. like the rest of them. Let me ask you a question. I, th- I saw a tweet from you mm. questioning Will Snelling's VFL game last week. Mm. Does he deserve to even? Look, I didn't point. think he was great. The argument to me that his pressure was good, and granted, you've got to give him that. He had, I think, 10 tackles. That's great. But that's not what I'm – his disposal was really poor. Um, so I'm not sure that you get into the team for just having a great amount of tackles, given it was our turnovers that killed us last week. I'm not sure you bring another player in that turned the ball over mm. in the VFL a lot. So, and Snelling's problem has always been he can't kick more than about 30 metres. So. Yeah. But, but are we lacking pressure around the ball? If, it, if that's your main concern with our team, then you probably bring him in as sub maybe. I, I probably mm. still prefer Hind for a bit of speed, a bit of run, if you're telling me to choose. But even he's got deficiencies. I mean, who fucking knows? Who, would you, who do you want as the sub? <laughs> yeah, probably Massimo. He's probably the most versatile yeah. yeah, I think Hines playing his last year, to be honest. I don't um, know if he's contracted for next year. Yeah, I don't know. don't know. But anyway, um, all right, moving to the smoking Joe and the sitting Joe. Which I've got the smoking. You you I've got smoking? the smoking this year, this all week. Right. You've who's, got... who's your smoking Joe? I'm going to go in a twist for the Ooh. listeners. I'm going to go Harry Jones. <laughs> are you, are As you... my smoking Joe. I'm not being facetious. I'm I'm backing him to play a good game. Oh, okay. I'm impressed. Is it anything to do I, – I can't say I know a lot about the GWS back line. Are they, are they liable to be stretched by – Polish uh, lanky leading forwards. Look, without being too many, I don't know too many that are going to be stretched for that. But um, uh, no, I don't think they'll be. I think they'll, they've got a pretty decent back line, um, albeit without Phil Davis. Uh, but I think I'm just going to back Brad Scott more than Harry. I'm going to back Brad Scott's faith. That's what I'm backing. Okay. For okay. the smoking like Joe. It. Hit me with your sitting Joe. So just for new listeners, Smoking Joe is, is the player that's going to smoke, going to be really good, above expectations. So last week that would have been, for example, Jay Kelly. Um, King. And, and the sitting Joe. <laughs> but are you like <laughs> Jay? Um, the sitting Joe is somebody that at the end of the game you go, oh, God, like they would have been better off just um, staying at home or sitting on the fence. Uh, who's going to be my sitting Joe? Here you uh, go. Look, it pains me to say it. I, I think at the end of this game, we might be questioning Sam Wiedemann's. Ooh. Is he worth bringing into the bringing into the club? I feel I feel a bit sorry for him because the whole off season. He's been second second man up to Peter Wright. He expected to play the whole season on the second, third best defender. You know, they trained as, as accordingly position-wise mm. who's leading where. So I do feel a bit sorry for him because he's not a first defender, but we're a first forward, but we're making him we, – he has to play that. And well, hopefully – yeah, I agree. I mean, hopefully Jakey Stringer having another – being better for the run – will we'll kind of take a bit of attention away. But I just – he's one of those guys who's a bit of Courtney Johns about him. Oh, don't. And I, I'll explain yeah. why. <laughs> if you're lining him up in the playground, you go, oh, that guy's – I'm picking him. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's big, he's strong. Mm. And even the way he moves, the way he leads, mm. how often like does it. he, like, get his hands to the ball? Mm-hmm. But he just flaps his lines at the at the critical moment, and to your point, I think particularly 
in an environment where he's kind of been made to play key forward. And particularly if we're not necessarily bringing the ball out with ease, um, he might look really bad. And that's where we might say uh, go like a I don't know if you know, like last week, every time he flew for a ball with a really nice lead, to be honest, mm. he had two defenders either side of him. Now, that's Peter Wright. Every time he flies, he's yeah, got yeah, two, yeah. two, three defenders around him. Sam Wiedemann's not as talented as Peter Wright. So if Peter Wright's there, Sam Wiedemann's got one third, third best defender, if that, on him. Mm. So this is for where... me, he's not, be- he's not being allowed... We cannot. Ju- I am firmly on this. We cannot judge Sam Wiedemann until two meter Peter is back. I, I firmly believe that. Mm. I, I don't think. I don't think we can hold him in great judgment until we see the forward line how how Brad Scott trained it and how we all thought it would be um, with Peter right there. I don't think Strigger's going to alleviate any of that. I'll be honest. And to be honest, oh, I can't get around any of the feedback about Stringer having a bad game. I thought he 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 did what he needed to do what, when he was allowed to do it. Well, look, I don't mind people saying Stringer didn't have a great game because I don't think he did. But for people to say Stringer was rubbish, useless, should be dropped. But what that's are you what, measuring? That's what, that's what blows my mind. But what are you measuring Stringer a bad game on? That he only kicked one goal? That he only no, had just five the, possessions? What? What are you? What are we? What are we measuring Jake Stringer on? Because I'm just measuring it on his best. So, so relative to what he can do, he was down. But what's that? What he, so, what pressuring, tackling, playing time in the midfield, kicking well, two, three goals. That's not his um, fault. Being a he bit wasn't cleaner. put in the midfield. Mm. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But uh, but I think it's because he's he's working his ba- way back to full fitness. So because the second because you know how Wilkie was marking everything in the back line, the second we made him more accountable by making Stringer leave his man and go out mm. and help to bring the ball to ground rather than Wilkie, that's when we started to mount a comeback. So Stringer sacrificed his uh, role to go and man up to help Wiedemann with Wilkie. So I kind of saw that as a bit of a sacrificial role from him. Yeah, yeah. Um, there, there, there were multiple mitigating circumstances. Again, not least the fact that it was his first game back from an injury yeah, yeah. that that play into to, to the way he played. Mm. Well, I just I, I would say to Brad Scott, please play. I implore you, play Kyle Langford up forward. It will take attention away from Stringer and Wiedemann. Um, and uh, Harrison as well. It will, it, it, and he kicks goals. And he's we, great on, we need great goals. marks too. And he's good. Yeah. He's a good mark. He's a good mark above his head for um, for his height. He gives away Correct. a little bit of height. But yeah, and to be honest, it's probably a little bit unpredictable as well for the defenders because we don't. We've never had that kind of forward line. Um, with with Kyle down there, so it'd be another reason to put him down there. I mean, he might play both back and forward, depending on how yeah, if, which way we're going. You'd, you'd I, start him forward, yeah, because you know how many how many I said this last week. How many mm. people in the team can kick five goals? Um, yeah. Not many. He can, yeah, and he's intelligent. He knows when to lead. Yeah. He knows how to use space. That's one he knows thing when that to double back. That's another thing that I think he's got a very good footy understanding footy brain not quite mm. as an elite level of stringer like with his footy kind of iq and smarts but i think yeah you're right i think he's smart on his leading and he's um get, making space you know finding space let's hope it, it's not all in i'm calling it kyle's corner Pete, peter Pe- two minute <laughs> peter's got peter's pocket and i'm call- calling that side kyle's corner um but he's smart with the ball i do i, I really do think that and we want davy to stay down. On the ground, <laughs> in, in Davy's ditch. Yes. <laughs> oh God, this is beautiful. Okay, love this. Love this for us. Uh, yeah. yeah. So as soon as Kyle way. gets it in his corner, in Kyle's corner, he just needs to get it into the forward line and just let Davy will be in his ditch and just let him do some magic. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Yep. Now, um, finally, moving to the wild card, I want to throw at you. For this game. So last week, GWS suffered from umpire uh, abuse. 
<laughs> umpire abuse is a good way to put it. Um, the umpires are umpire Brennan Hoskin, <sighs> Paul Rebashini, Nicholas McGuinness, and your umpire and my umpire of the millennium, Ray Chamberlain. <laughs> Any chance that they just decide, you know what, we owe hey, back. Oh, of we, we know that We know that the AFL, this is where I'll put my tinfoil hat on here, we know the AFL love, would, would love to just WWE the whole thing and just predetermine who plays finals and who wins. Mm-hmm. Carlton are the, the favourite sons at the moment. Um, so they've got the dream draw. Um, they're getting the umpiring decisions. We know they feel the same about Collingwood. Um, we know that GWS is the AFL, basically AFL FC. It's their team. They continue to pay paid a, a significant off-field amount of, of the GWS's costs. All the draft picks, all the concessions they've had over the years, they want GWS to be successful. Mm-hmm. Are we going to get reamed in this game? Oh, absolutely. However, <laughs> there was only one however, answer. however, the free kick count will be absolutely... Tie by the end. Of oh the yeah, game. by the end of it. Yeah, just just because the square last, ups will, la- will come. I mean, last week, classic example: touched a St Kilda player in the forward line. Yeah, free kick, fifty meters, just for raising mm-hmm. an eyebrow. Mm. Um, at the other end, players held nothing, but we got all these free kicks in the back line. Um, you know what? I feel like we're going to see if we even so much as breathe on Stephen Canilio, It's going to be a free kick. They're gonna, they're yeah, gonna yeah, want yeah. to. It, you just have to look in Stephen Kennedy's direction, wrong, and free kick Stephen, so free kick, because yeah. uh, he's been, you know, there's been a lot of uh, argument that the umpires are painting him as a disrespectful person, and he's not, and his character's been thrown through the mud during the week. So I think there'll be a little bit of uh, tapping on the butt from the umpires this week towards. Well, yeah, maybe not, maybe not just tapping. But, yeah, um, that's right. A lot, a lot, something a lot more intimate. Let's be yes. <laughs> let's be quite honest. So I think we're gonna we're gonna really suffer from that. So thanks again, yeah. once well, again, well, thank you, Carlton. Well, Ray is, Ray is the right height. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just got a shiver then. Yeah. All right. Thanks. So, what's your prediction? Um, you know, we do a prediction in the podcast, but it's closer to yeah. This is the game look. Now. I'm still going to say a win, but I'm probably not as confident. It's going to be. I reckon it'll be under a kick. Oh, under a yeah, yeah. I think I it's going to be one of those it. games. I, I know. I know. Yeah, and only because of umpire fuckery. I'm I'm, I'm going to go out and say it'll be under a kick. Um. Yeah. What do you reckon? You know what? I actually think I think reality is going to start to bite. You still thing. you're sticking with that. You haven't you haven't and turned. I think GW. I said this last week. I think GWX yeah. will win, and it might be you know it, it'll be in the teens, thirteen points. Oh, and I, I I think it will come down to one primary decisions. Yeah. Look, if we don't start well. If, if Brad Scott can't get them to start well tomorrow, I'll be really, really disappointed. And, I yeah. will, you know, as you, everyone knows, I'm driving the Brad Scott bus. But it will really, really say something about him getting the team up and ready right from the get-go. If Draper's not as aggressive as he is when the game is in, you know, on the line, as he is from the first bounce tomorrow, I'm going to be really disappointed in both coach and player. Because that's that's going to be a show of maturity hmm. um, in the team and how well the coaches are actually getting through. Yep. Because um, we've started poorly. Let's be quite honest in every game so far this year, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been shit house. So, and it's one of those things. I don't know. If Brad's got. I mean, it, there comes a point where players need to take responsibility, and you know. We saw some of the habits that started to drive us 
up the wall in recent years creep back in last week and the week before, I think. We got away what, with it. What would you say there were the turnovers? Turnovers, was, yeah. So def- the defensive. In, in particular, just just turnovers out of defence in particular. Um, and g- granted, St Kilda applied pressure and they structured up against us and all those things, but some of them were just inexplicable. Yeah. Inexplicable, I said, inexplicable. Um, they, they were just unfathomable. Like, mm. like, and guys who, who are good good kicks mm. like Massimo. Mm-hmm. Um, so those sorts of things, I think it's going to take time and this is where we need to be super patient with, with Brad Scott. And, yeah, maybe that's why maybe playing certain youngsters who maybe don't merit a game on face value Maybe his view of the world is like let's just see who's who's actually on on this list, who is going to be part of my future and, and who who isn't, and that's part of the reason we'll see some some selections that are a little bit. And stronger. I guess, and let's be honest, like on that point, at least then he can see if I've played Harry Jones for a good 10, 15 <laughs> game yeah, block. If I've played no, but he's the one where you, he's seeing what he's made of. You know, he's had I a think good there's week. a few of them. There's a few He's a good of them 10 week block continuity, you know, um, and let's hope he stays uninjured and fitness is, is at a good level. Hey, I've, put, I've tipped him to be the smoke and Joe. I'm on Harry's side. I am yeah. all on Harry. He's yeah. He's going to four I, tomorrow. I, I, I don't know one smoke and Joe makes a summer, but okay. But I think there's a few of them. I think the guy we spoke about earlier, Laverd. I think um, there's a group of guys who. Yeah, but he's probably, not a young player. He's stab- well, semi established. Well, he's, he's 26, maybe? Yeah, so he's in, in our demographic. He's an old, he's one of the oldies. Yeah, yeah. But, but the question will be uh, do I persist with these guys beyond this year? And I, I don't think so. I think, I think our window, everyone talks about this elusive premiership window. Mm. Um, we've been living in a in a windowless house for a long time. <laughs> um, we've been living in, in, fr- in a Fritzel ju- dungeon. We've been in a cave. Yeah, <laughs> we've been in a Fritzel dungeon. That we've, apart from Yossip Fritzel coming down and giving us a, a bowl of food every once in a while, there's no light. But I I think it's that, that Archie, Perkins, Hobbs, this group, they're the guys that we want to see mature and they'll take us to finals. And, and the this draft and, and the next one and there's a group of players that won't be part of that journey and, and so it, it'll take time but I, I'm here for the lot to your point about Brad Scott you're driving the train I'm definitely a passenger I'm here mm-hmm. for the long haul yeah and I'm happy to give it two three years um yeah. but I want to, to to circle back I want to see changes to things like turnovers and um not spreading um, when kicking out from fullback, so we're forced to kick long down the line. Did you feel habits. like you saw that in the first few a couple last of games? Couple of weeks, last couple of weeks, I've seen No, that. I mean, do you, no, do you feel <sighs> like you saw the positive in the first couple of weeks, a change? Or do you feel like you've only seen some of the bad habits creep back in? I guess it's a hard one, isn't it? Because Hawthorne is probably hard to judge because of how bad they were. And then when it comes to... Oh, the last two weeks, yeah, there have been some of those old things that that have troubled us. But um, yeah, it will. It is a work in progress. I'm not. I'm not expecting to play finals this year. I, I never was. I never was expecting to play finals. But you know, we get. I got caught up like everyone else. We were winning. We were top of the ladder for you know some. Fancy Still in the com- comical, comical reason, yeah. It's, it's only round three. Last. It's, it's only round last, three. But I never expected. I just got a bit caught up with the. I, I just was brought back down to reality last week, which is good. I think I needed it because that's yeah. where we're going to be. We're going to be, and look, I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm not going to lie. The fight back was great. Uh, we probably would have, you know, melted into a puddle in previous years gone by. So the fight back was good, and that's where I see. That's where I see Brad Scott talking about Heppel's leadership, that calm head mm. on the wing just picking the boys up. That's where I kind of see him giving credit to Heppel. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you're right. And again, maybe, maybe that's why he'll just ha- he'll be happy with mediocre performances from Heppel. And maybe he just, just sub- in subs thing. him. Maybe he just subs him where we don't have injuries. He just mm. subs him more often than not. Well, who knows? We could be three one at the end of tomorrow. Oh, really? are we... You're not. Are you not? I can't obviously leave my my Easter lunch table. Are you? Will you be going to the game? Oh, I've got a lunch as well. Okay. Yep. And but let me say, let me say, there'll be no nobody dare not in my family say anything about my headphones and and iPad set up at the table because th- I will be doing that. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I'll probably watch it on TV. Yeah, it, as much as I'd like to be there. It's because lunch yeah. will. Yeah, it's just I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I wish it was the 440 game because I could, probably could have escaped for that. For once. I can't believe it. Yeah, for once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've we, um, we, we, we not done any favours ever. No, nah, nah, smack bang, like 2 o'clock even, not even the 3 o'clock so people close by can finish lunch and go. They know it's Easter. What? Like, it makes no fucking sense. And then next yeah. week is the is world's worst idea. <sighs> All the games in Adelaide. <sighs> fucking. What day do we play next week? It's Saturday. Stupidest. Saturday, let me finish my rant. The stupidest Sorry. fucking um, idea ever. Whoever came up with this, it's, it's the dumbest idea since um, Churchill decided to invade Turkey in World War I via Gallipoli. Gallipoli. <laughs> um, we play 10 past four, of course it is, um, <laughs> on Saturday. Are we just trying to placate Adelaide? Is that what the thing is? Like, we're just trying to make them feel a bit of love? I don't, like, what's the I reasoning behind this? I don't fucking know. It's ridiculous. I'll have more to say um, <laughs> next week. You know, so I'll have yeah, more to say in the podcast proper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Let's hope we get a win tomorrow and just to keep the spirits up. True, true. Well, on that note, that's episode four of FF. Jana's forecast down, done. Thanks to everyone that listened and go Bombers. Bye.